What I'm about to show you in this card video has never been tested or shown in any other YouTube video. At least I haven't seen anyone testing these settings with proof and some of them were unknown for a long time, such as this one and how it could change everything. In the past year, I was testing a lot of card settings that could directly or indirectly affect the smoothness of how controllers work on PS5, Xbox, and PC. And for some reason, I was always doing them in my test accounts, but I never really showed what settings do I use? To a point some of you asked what are your settings? Someone else asked about making a video about the linear curve. The truth is I've been using linear curves for a long time and I don't wish to change it to any other curve. There are some specific changes and settings I made after the half season 3 update and now after the season 4 because there were some huge changes that forced me to look into my settings again. First, I disclaim any responsibility for these settings. Take a screenshot of your old settings before you even try what I'm about to show you. Second, if you are a player who is used to extreme like extreme low sensitivity or extreme high sensitivity, these settings may never work for you. Third, I'm gonna show you the reason why I use these settings to get the most advantage and the science behind it that in my opinion makes it the best settings for myself. Give it a try like everything else and you may find it helpful but try it for at least a day. Not to mention over and over again but these curves you may have seen many times aren't real. The last time I tested the real response curves they looked like this. Setting number 1. Sensitivity plus curves plus dead zone combination. I use a horizontal and vertical sensitivity of 7 which is mainly used when you are not aiming and I like the camera being a bit faster to rotate faster if I need to. However, I use an ADS sensitivity multiplier at 0.50. This will reduce the aiming speed when you hold down L2. I found this value the best with the combination of left stick mean at 5 and the left stick max at 69. This value 60 to 70 helps me to activate aim assist earlier compared to a value like 99. But the reason I kept mean at 5 is to prevent any accidental movement due to drift or small adjustments. It's a personal choice. If you want to move extremely fast or you don't care about walking slow, then you can reduce the left stick max even more. But I don't want that. It's just me. For the right stick, I kept mean at 1. You may say, don't you want a bit of drift to automatically activate aim assist all the time? No, I do not wish that. And if I get drift on my right stick, I may even increase it a bit more in the future. Again, that's just me. For the right stick max, I kept it at 99. For the L2 and R2 dead zone, I found the value 0 the best to prevent any dead zone and keep in mind I have trigger effects fully off. Settings number 2. Response curve slope scale. I'm using the response curve type on linear with a slope scale of 0.2. 31. This value is not some random BS value. It took me a lot of time to play and realize this value matches the best with my aim assist type and play style among other settings I'll show you soon. Such as the reason I use FOV 120 all the time. Hold on to your horses, we'll get there soon. This is almost the real curve you'll get when you have aim response curve type on linear with a slope scale of 0.31. This shape is what you get. And if you wonder, on the left side we have full rotation 360 degrees and on the bottom we have the stick movement value. So if this is my right stick and I'm pushing it in a direction, let's say from center to right, this is the response of my camera based on how much I pushed my controller's right stick. This curve is still not a real linear curve. And based on the settings I have, I like this small curve that exponentially changes over the push value. And even if you make slope scale zero, you'll never get close to a one-to-one -one curve in COD. You may also notice I'm using gradual instead of instant. Why is that? Based on another advanced test we made recently, here's the main difference between all ADS sensitivity transition timing. The gradual setting slowly changes the speed to ADS multiplier over time, which works better for me since I increased my sensitivity from 6 to 7 recently. Now it's time to talk about why default aim assist instead of black ops. I also recently made another video about why Black Ops doesn't feel the same. It's different every time COD updates the game. And now based on the latest update and test I made, it's identical to default. But a bit stronger and lasts longer in mid-range when you are moving your character. I do not wish to have more following aim assist when I move my character on my camera. That limits the ability to target the person I want. And except that there is no difference between the two, so I prefer using default. More assist is not always a good thing. I tested Overwatch 2 with 10% aim assist for sniping with Widowmaker if you know her. And after a week, I was a crazy sniper. Sometimes having a bit more freedom is better, unless you can't adapt to the change. 
change. Settings number 3. Field of view and graphics. I'm using a field of view of 120 and based on the chart test we made again, this is almost identical to 80 in terms of aim assist strength for the left stick. As you know, I like having less AA on the left stick. Again, if you are wondering what the heck is this picture, it's the aim assist time based on the field of view on a fixed test I made. This is field of view 60, here's FOV 120 at the same physical distance. We notice the highest aim assist for the left stick alone is achieved at value 100. I mainly play multiplayer, I'm not a warzone player at all. And a field of view under 110 looks too close to me with the 27 inch monitor I use. The field of view of 120 is not even enough. If I can't see someone on my screen and I lose a lot of sight it doesn't matter if i get a little more aim assist because i can't even see them but this also has an advantage aside from more field of view again based on the test we made the higher the field of view the lower the strength of aim assist will be for the right stick as well more freedom in my opinion but and that is a huge but there's a secret setting in the controller section aiming and motion sensor advanced settings even when it is off the setting says fov sensitivity is scaling a bunch of you asked me if turning this option off will make any difference to aim assist when changing FOV. I tested it in depth for hours. Before I share the results, don't forget to share this video with your friends and give it a like so I'll be happy. And by the way, I read every single comment even if I don't have time to respond. So let me know what you think about this video and also any questions you have. Based on 13 different tests I made for this option, I realized if you turn it off, the aim assist strength becomes less. It somehow indirectly affects your aim assist. In one of these tests, I tried a field of view of 110, and on the value 80 for the right stick with a sensitivity of 7, the aim assist timing decreased by 48 to 64 milliseconds on average. It means the window size became smaller and there was less time where the aim assist kicked in. And you could get out of that target easier. It might be an advantage for some, but keep in mind I only tested close to mid-range uh, with a FOV of 110 and only on the right stick with default aim assist type. I have no idea how it may work with various settings. So for now, I'm keeping this option on because as I'm using a higher FOV, I already have less aim assist. I don't want to lower it even more, especially that I'm using a linear curve with a high sense. But there's something more important to mention. The FOV aim assist test we made was based on the hip fire. When you aim with L2, what matters is the weapon FOV, which we tested in the last video and again the wider the FOV the less aim assist you'll get and for that option I'm also using default the fact is I don't shoot hip fire often so I don't worry about aim assist being weaker when I'm running and not aiming it's actually something good for me in case you're wondering what about dual sense edge settings specifically on PS5 I'm using default here for both left and right sticks for the back buttons I prefer jump and crouch I use them often However, when it comes to the L2 dead zone, I reset them to 0 to 1 in case I accidentally enable the threshold in the game or some update ruins that. This will ensure that the full range is achieved on a digital value of 0 to 1, the fastest way to aim. For R2, I left it on 0 to 100, again a personal thing. For now, it works the same as 0 to 1 due to not having any dead zone in the game. I use the stoppers on zone 1, I don't like to limit it. It's uncomfortable for me. I use a USB cable connected to the front type C port and change the controller connection to use a USB cable as it's the fastest way for DualSense Edge. For the graphics settings in the game, here's what I use. As I already told you, I don't play Warzone, so these graphical settings are optimized for multiplayer. For Warzone, I have another video you can check from the link above. I have on demand texture streaming off, all post processing effects are off. 120Hz mode enabled, FOV 120, obvious. And for personal reasons, inverted flashbang and SDR. I don't play on HDR. It's mainly because of a small increase in input lag when I'm using uh, my console with the capture card. And you don't need to worry about that because it's about my capture card. If you have a good 120Hz TV, HDR doesn't add any input lag to this game. And the most important setting I always kept off is the crossplay. To be honest, I don't wish to play against PC players. And I have a lot of reasons for that, but let me know if you use this option in the comments or not. If you are wondering about 4 hidden settings that even pros don't know in COD, check the video on the screen.